Hello, Audrey. Never forget you're yelling at yourself. You got the wrong view. Man, get your shit together, what what B-roll? <laughs> I, I do get mad. I do get mad. I talk to myself all the time. Don't feel bad. <laughs> all right. How, are you happy with that? Uh, I mean, are you happy like if you're... It's just really hard to do this like smoothly, like zooming in and out. Oh, sweet Becca. Practice. It'll practice. It'll come with practice. Off topic week took with Penhurst, right? I learned yeah. that you should never give. Uh, no offense. Oh, no, no, offense. no. You just... No. No, it's, no offense taken. Yeah. It, you and James. It was like I get why psychics shouldn't hold equipment. First off, the power drains, but then secondly, we're, we're focused you know, on everything. Focusing like, on the, the cameras. We're, yeah, we're we're not focused on on what the cameras do. Right. What's this? What is this? Why is this tool in front of me? Um, <laughs> we we get totally like lost with it. <clears throat> but you'll you'll see like Beck is a little unusual at least uh, compared to me because when she's doing psychic stuff, she she really needs her eyes. She's very visual. Right. Um, whereas like if I'm doing psychic stuff my attention turns toward all that stuff like the, the inner perception and you'll find one the blindfold was never a problem and I, I tended to close my eyes anyway uh, and so I just my my vision turns inward and like everything turns inward as I'm analyzing what I'm picking up so yeah putting a camera in my hand when I'm like that I'm just like yeah camera hand none of those things matter anymore here let me vomit forth random stuff I'm picking up from my environment <laughs> So, if we look drained, it's because we were at the Lake County History Center last night. Yep. Uh, the three of us, Michelle, myself, and Rebecca, and many other great people. Um, we're going to start with uh, our good friend Scott Felger had asked a question. And I, I've already heard Michelle's answer, but you guys need to hear because this is amazing and it's going to clear up a lot of questions. Scott basically, and Scott, I'm sorry, not quoting this directly, but it was to the extent of when you go to a sane asylums, why do the people that were mentally ill in life retain that in the afterlife? Or do they, I guess, yeah. was the question, do they retain that uh, mental illness? And your answer was beautiful. I'll try to pretend like I'm hearing this for the first time because my expression the first time was, wow, I was blown away. Well, but. the first thing is sometimes they do. Uh, and we have a widespread belief that when someone dies, they become unburdened from everything that might have been weighing them down in this life. And while technically that is true, when you're talking about a human ghost, uh, they become immersed in who they were and what they went through and what they were carrying. Um, and that emotional baggage translates to what we usually, uh, and I hate the word because of like the baggage that comes with it itself, but earthbound. Yeah. The, the idea of a ghost that is earthbound or stuck is someone who has not let go of that, that baggage connected to that most recent lifetime. Uh, so in theory, if they realize that they can let this stuff go, then it's not a problem. So any kind of handicap, any kind of illness, any kind of mental um, infirmity or, or problem that they might have been experiencing in life, any of that stuff they can slough off just as they did their flesh, their, their clothes, and, and the rest and of it. And literally just be, just yeah, be. Yeah, just, just be the, mm -hmm. their, their most pure and authentic self at the core underneath all of that. But to get to that point, uh, again, they have to get and let it go. Now, how is letting it go hard? Um, because you're like, well, of course, now you're dead. None of that stuff matters. But it's, it's like um, we've all seen people who are in abusive relationships, and everybody who, hasn't, who doesn't really see that situation is like, well, why don't you just leave? Mm -hmm. You know, all these terrible things are happening. Why don't you just leave? There's a lot of reasons why people can't remove themselves from difficult situations. Uh, one is we're incredibly attached to things that are familiar. Uh, you, you talk to any abused person in a relationship like that, and one of the first things that they'll say when you say, well, just, just leave, just cut ties, walk away, they'll be like, but I don't know what I will do. I can't guarantee that I will have feet, you know, clothing or, or housing or shelter. Uh, it's, it's moving from something that's familiar to something that is completely unknown. And that's the fear of the unknown. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. So well, and, and it's not even a fear of like you know, am I going to heaven? Am I going mm -hmm. to hell? It's literally I'm afraid of letting go of what I have because even this that is terrible, at least is predictable and familiar. Right. Uh, and and so that is definitely a part of why you will find uh, spirits in various asylums and, and hospitals and even you know regular garden variety houses where they had very terrible lives and they haven't been able to let that stuff go. 
and it's it's not that they're weak it's not even that they're they, they are damaged they are wounded uh, but they can't quite get past that and they haven't and they have to do it in their own time I, I think that's the other thing that's important to understand I think like investigators even get confused when they say our spirits trapped in an actual location. Yeah. Is it the location that's trapping them? Not per se. It's actually no. they're it, like you're saying they're familiar to that that well, location and, and they can't move on from it. They don't want to. They seem stuck to the location because mm -hmm. they believe that they're stuck to that mm -hmm. location. All of these experiences are things that they associate with that space, and so it anchors them. But really, what's anchoring them is them. Mm -hmm. So let, let's hypothetically say someone who suffered a, an absolute terrible, horrible, torturous death. And you know, they were murdered in the back bedroom of this old house. And that's where you find their spirit. And they just kind of seem to be replaying the, the moments leading up to and the, the death itself. And we find that they're intelligent as opposed to a residual haunting that, that is sometimes things that just replay like that. And they don't seem to ever leave that back room. Um, there is there is no cosmic force that has, you know, nailed their spirit back to that room beyond their own overwhelmed reaction to the trauma, and until such time as they realize that they can let that go, that they can let go of the trauma, let go of the suffering, let go of their association with that place, and and the healthiest thing for them to be, uh, or at least the healthiest thing for them to do, would be to leave that space entirely because all of those associations are really tied to the location as well.